broadcast on WWVA 1170 AM on Sundays at 9.30 AM and 6.30 PM. For more information on both ministries, you can visit our website at www.greaterloveministrieswv.org. Remember, you can also download our ministry app for iPhones and Android phones by going to your app store and searching Greater Love International. We thank you for tuning in with us today, and we invite you to join us this evening for a special service at 5 o'clock p.m. with our guest speaker, Bishop Eric Richardson. On October 5th will be our call-in prayer at 10 a.m. You can call 712-775-7031. The access code is 230635-POUND. Additional announcements we have are October 6th at 5 p.m. We will continue our anniversary celebration with guest speaker District Elder Levi Downs from Duquesne, Pennsylvania. On October 13th at 10.30 a.m., we will have Bishop James Nelson from Baltimore, Maryland. Additionally, on October 13th at 6 p.m. will be our district fellowship service that will be held at the Tree of Life in Martins Ferry, Ohio. Guest speaker will be Bishop James Nelson. On October 16th, well, 16th and 18th will be our fall revival that will be held here at Bethlehem Temple in Wheeling. Our guest speaker will be Suffolk and Bishop Earl Parche from Orlando, Florida. On October 20th will be our Women's Day services. You're invited to join us with Dr. Charlotte Moore. will be with us for our morning service at 10 and 30 a.m. as well as a 4 o'clock p.m. service. And on October 27th will be Men's Day at 5 o'clock p.m with guest speaker Suffolk and Bishop Jeremiah Thomas. Our thought for this week, ah, uh, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal. Philippians 3 verses 13 and 14. Remember, you're welcome to any and all of our services. At this time, we would like for you to stand and greet our pastor, District Elder D.W. Cummings, as he leads us in the apostolic affirmation and the furtherance of the service. Let us put our hands together and give God praise as he comes. God bless you. Let's give that hand to who it belongs. Give God a hand. Repeat after me and say, one Lord, one, Lord, one faith. One and one baptism. one baptism. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power, somebody say power, power, to save those that believe. And I believe that Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. Let me tell you something else I believe. I believe God is good when? All the time. And all the time. God is good. No matter what your problems are, no matter what you're going through, the God we serve is a good God. You, I, I said the God we serve is a good Thank God. You. I said the God we serve is a good God, and he's worthy. Somebody help me say worthy. Worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, and because he is so good, we are convinced that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. I want to read into your hearing something that those in the live audience have already read. It's from the book of Mark, the third chapter, and I want to read verse 21. It says, and when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said he is besides himself. And uh, verse 23, they said, and they called him unto him, and he said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And then and down in verse 35, he says, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. I want to talk to you about friends who said he was beside himself. His foes, his enemies, who said he must be from Satan. And his family, who he didn't recognize at the time. I want to talk about friends, foes, and family. And I want to ask the question, will the real praisers pre please stand up? Somebody look at somebody next to you and say, will the real praisers, will the real praisers please stand up? Please let us go to God in prayer. I'm going to ask as many of you as will if you go across the aisle and get your neighbor by the hand as we intercede for one another. And while you're getting each other's hand, 
I want you to sing the song with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me say it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Been so good. Been so good. Has he been good to anybody? Been so good. He's been so good. I just want to thank you. Has he made a way? Made a way. Has he made a way for anybody? Made a way. Has he made a way? Made a way. I just, I just want to thank you. You, Lord. One more time. Been my friend. Been my friend. Has he been your friend today? Been my friend. Been my friend. Been my friend. I just want to thank you. Just before we pray, someone wrote a letter that our announcer, Sister Marsha, was going to read, asking for prayer. Sister Marsha. From Bobby in Aroda, Virginia. Just a few lines to say hello. I hear you on the radio in West Virginia. I'd like for you to pray that God will heal me of a mass in my abdomen. Pray for me that God will heal, heal my eye. Amen. Can we say Amen. Bobby, we're going to pray for you, and we believe that God is a healer and that there is nothing too hard for our God to do. And we encourage you to keep listening. We're also praying for Mother Hibbert, who is going through a health challenge, and we believe that God is able to touch her body as well. Amen. That we believe God is not through interceding for her we're praying for the Pitts family who lost a loved one but we know that God is able to comfort the hearts of those that mourn we're going to sing thank you Lord one last time and then we're going to go to God in prayer when we pray would you pray for the person whose hands you're holding for when you intercede for others that's when God intercedes for you well it's thank you somebody help me say thank you Thank you, thank you, I just, I just want to thank, say it again, I just want, I just want to, one more last time, I, I just want to thank you, Father in the name of Jesus, we need your help today, Lord. We pray right now that you'd intercede for Bobby, Lord. You know what's going on, Lord God, in his abdomen. You know what's going on with his eye. Lord, we know you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. You told us, call on me in the day of trouble, and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you know not of. We pray right now, Lord God, for your angels of mercy, Lord God, to touch Mother Hibbert's body, Lord God, from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet, Lord God. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord. You said, try me and see. Is there anything too hard for our God to do? We're calling on you right now. You said, by your stripes, we were healed of all manner of diseases. We believe your word. We stand on your promise. We pray that you comfort the Pitts family and the loss of their sister, Lord. Move in a behalf. Lord. Only a God can do, Lord. Let them know they lost their sister, but they still have you. Now, Lord God, we pray for everyone under the sound of our voice, those in the live audience and 
those over the radio and television and internet. We pray that you move for them, Lord God. Oh, God, bless your hand of mercy. Touch them right now, Lord. Let your Shekinah glory rain on them, Lord. Rain on us, King Jesus. Rain on us, Lord. Send your glory, Lord God. Send your anointing, Lord. Send your power. We put it all into your hands. In the name of Jesus, we call those things that are not as though they already are. In Jesus' name, can you drop the hands and begin to clap your hands and say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. As you go back to your seat, tell somebody God is a good God. Yes, he is. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. Well, it's when I was sick, Lord, you healed me. Well, it's when I was sick, Lord, you healed me me and I thank you all the day of my oh Lord I thank you Lord I thank you well I thank you Lord I thank well I thank you all the days of my life oh Lord I thank you Lord I thank you well I well I thank you all the days well it's when I was lost Lord, you found me. Well, it's when I was lost. Lord, you found me. Well, it's when I was lost. Lord, you found me. And I thank you all the days. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Well, I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days of my life. Oh Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. Well, I well, I thank you all the days. Well, it's when I was lost, Lord, you found me. Well, it's when I was lost, Lord, you. Oh yes, it's when I was lost, Lord, you found me, and I thank you all the days. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days of my life. Oh Lord, I thank you. Well, I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I well, I thank you all the days of my life. Uh, oh, yes, I thank you. Well, I well, I thank you all the days. Just clap your hands a minute. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days of my life. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days. One last time. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I thank you all the days of my life. Oh yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Well, I well, I thank you all the day. Give God a hand, praise. Anybody want to thank Him? Hallelujah! I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you all the days of my life. God bless you. I'd like to direct your attention to the book of Saint Mark, the third chapter. And again, we're keying in on uh, verse 21. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. This is his friends talking. They said, he is beside himself. Those were his friends. And then it was his 
foes in verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. And then it was his family in verse 31. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him friends, foes, and family. Will the real praisers please stand up? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, raise your hand and send, send your word, Lord. Uh, you've heard me talk about Johnny in Sunday school. Johnny uh, was listening to a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher asked the question, what climbs up trees, uh, has a tail, and gathers nuts? Johnny said, I've been coming to Sunday school for a while, and uh, I know that no matter what the problem is, Jesus is the answer. But it sure enough sounds like a squirrel to me. And I think Johnny's right, that no matter what your problem, Jesus is the answer. Can you say amen? amen? No matter what your status or situation in life, Jesus is the answer. Uh, no matter what's going on in your body, Jesus is the answer. No matter what's going on in your marriage or in your family or with your children, Jesus is the answer. But Jesus is the only one qualified to meet every one of your needs. Clap your head and shout hallelujah. I am convinced uh, that we all will experience the love of God before we know the God of love. Uh, let me say that again. We all know the love of God before we know the God of love. And what are you saying, Pastor Cummings, that even before you got saved, even before you donned the doors of the church, God was already loving you. Uh, you were experiencing his love when you should have OD'd, but God let you live. Uh, you were experiencing his love that you drove drunk and you still made it home. Uh, you were experiencing his love when things could have gone another way, but God had mercy on you. Uh, you experienced the love of God uh, way before you met the God of love. Uh, but now that you know him, uh, you know that he's the best thing uh, that ever happened to you. Oh, clap your hand and shout hallelujah. What we must pray for and come to an understanding, help us, Holy Ghost, uh, is that some saints that we make judgments on, and God help us for judging others, uh, but some saints are weak, uh, and others are wicked. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, some of the things that are going on uh, is because some are weak uh, and others are wicked. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor Cummings? Uh, sometimes uh, they both may be doing the same thing. Uh, the difference is uh, what's going on in their heart. Uh, some are really trying, but they're weak and they have failed. Uh, others are wicked. They're not even trying, uh, but they're pretending to be something that they're not. Uh, uh, let me just use an illustration. Uh, Peter was weak. Uh, Judas was wicked. Uh, they were both disciples of Christ. Uh, they were both in relationship with Christ. Uh, Peter was weak. They both denied Christ. Uh, but Peter denied Christ uh, because he was weak. Uh, 
Judas denied Christ because he was wicked. Uh, they both did the same thing. Uh, Peter, though, when he denied Christ, it hurt him. Uh, he wept in bitter tears. Uh, he wanted to do better. Uh, and eventually God helped him to do better. Uh, Judas uh, did the same thing. Uh, but when he did it, he, the Bible says he did not seek for repentance uh, and ended up not being able to live with the guilt of what he did uh, and he killed himself. Uh, let me give another example. Uh, David was weak. Uh, King Saul was wicked. Uh, David and Saul both sinned in a number of ways. Uh, but when King Saul sinned, uh, it was never his fault. Uh, it was the people's fault. It was somebody else's fault. If they hadn't done this, then I wouldn't have done that. But it's not my fault. Uh, but David, when he did the sin, uh, David would say, it's my fault. Uh, I repent. Don't judge anybody else. Uh, create in me a clean heart uh, and renew in me a right kind of spirit. Uh, Saul was wicked. Uh, David was weak. They both did the same thing. Uh, but the difference was what was going on in their heart. Uh, I want to ask you tomorrow, this morning. Uh, is thine heart right with God? Uh, I'm not asking what you're doing on the outside. Uh, I'm asking what's going on in your heart. Uh, let me ask you. Let me give another example. Uh, if you take a rat uh, and put him in the best hotel uh, and the best room in that hotel uh, and the best bed in that room, uh, if you leave that rat on that bed, uh, eventually uh, that rat will turn that bed into a rat's nest uh, because that's what's in the rat's heart. Uh, you see, a pig and a sheep uh, may both end up in the mud, uh, but the pig enjoys it, uh, and the sheep is crying, trying to get out of it. Uh, when somebody is weak, uh, they may end up in the mud, uh, but they're crying, trying to get out of it. Uh, when somebody is wicked, uh, they're in the mud and they enjoy it. Uh, I'm asking you today uh, when your heart is right with God uh, it doesn't mean you don't make mistakes uh, but it means when you make a mistake uh, you'll come to God and say it's me, it's me it's me oh Lord uh, standing in the need of prayer. Uh, I may be weak but I'm not wicked uh, and the Bible Bible said even when you're weak, uh, that's when he'll make you strong. Oh, clap your hand and shall glory. <laughs> and that's just some of the amazing concepts uh, that Jesus put forth. Uh, and it's very easy for us today to read the New Testament uh, with hindsight uh, and see the attractiveness of the word uh, and of the works of Jesus Christ uh, and not recognize uh, how astonishing it was uh, when these words and events Events uh, were going on when Jesus was here in the physical sense. Uh, his friends, uh, his foe, uh, and his 
family uh, reacted in different ways. Uh, can you imagine if it was one of your childhood friends that you grew up with or your brother or sister that you grew up with uh, or your neighbor that you grew up with uh, and you're hearing about them raising somebody that was dead. Uh, uh, we read it now with uh, 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 serenity and not that much excitement, but can you imagine reading the newspaper and you're seeing somebody who you recognize who was a friend and they said they went to a funeral and stopped the funeral and raised them from the dead or they went to a graveyard and dug up a body and raised Raise them from the dead. Uh, can you imagine uh, of hearing or seeing on the evening news uh, your friend and they have the film at 11. Uh, they, they walk the water uh, that they were in a boat. They saw in, uh, in a storm and they spoke peace to troubled waters and not only did they walk the water they helped others to walk on water and you're looking at oh my God I know him look what he did uh, well, can you imagine reading a book about your friend uh, who took two fishes and five loaves of bread uh, and fed 5,000 men not counting the women and children uh, we read it with no surprise today uh, but the friends and the family were in shock uh, when they heard these things going on uh, listen to his friends talk uh, in Mark 3 and verse 21 uh, when they heard of all these things uh, they said he is beside himself uh, or in one version it means he's out of his mind uh, the verb is extensian in the Greek uh, and it means thrown out of balance uh, and it's used in classical literature of the act of becoming unhinged uh, the text is not clear if it's become uh, that he healed many uh, or whether they were doing it because he appointed 12 to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils uh, everywhere he went he had these 12 men following him. Uh, I wish I could get some 12 people to follow me everywhere I go. Uh, and he caused his friends to have suspicion. Uh, in the ordinary course of friendship, uh, neither of these events would be expected. Uh, but there is an element in the biblical teaching uh, that always sounds a little strange. Uh, we find uh, what uh, when you lose you find something uh, you may have lost what you had uh, but hopefully in Christ you find something better uh, he would teach uh, it's not until dying that we live uh, that you have to die out to your desires and your thoughts and your ways uh, and then you really find what living is all about uh, he would preach things like in giving away we gain uh, these things were strange to them uh, to give is to gain uh, many would say to give is to lose uh, but he taught to give was to gain. Uh, then he would say things uh, like to surrender is to be a conqueror. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, that when I surrender, I conquer. Uh, yes, when I surrender to the will of God, uh, I conquer things that I could not have conquered on my own. Uh, and then he would go on to say in conclusion uh, that in weakness 
we are made strong uh, because I'm no longer depending on what I can do uh, but I'm strong because now I'm dependent on what God can do uh, oh somebody shout hallelujah it's in the zeal of Jesus' challenges uh, that his friends felt like he must be crazy. Uh, he must be off balance uh, to say these kinds of things. Uh, to say that the zeal in life of the believer uh, is always misunderstood by society. Uh, why are you going to church so much? Uh, why are you giving? Uh, why are you surrendering your life to a God you cannot see? Uh, to quote John Scott again, uh, he says, if by fantasism uh, you really mean wholeheartedness to Christianity, uh, then fantasism of the relationship of Christ, uh, then every Christian ought to be a fanatic. Uh, if people can be a fanatic, about the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, why can't I be a fanatic about somebody who turned my life around and gave me joy unspeakable and full of glory? Uh, if it's not wrong to praise somebody who still loses games, uh, why should I not praise somebody who's never lost uh, but always wins? Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, understand. Uh, in the early days of Christianity, uh, certain people of wealth uh, would not hire somebody they knew to be a Christian uh, because they said, uh, if you hire those Christians, uh, they will do everything they can uh, to convert everybody on the job. Uh, they'll convert the housemaid, the kitchen maid, uh, the parlor maid and every other maid and every person on the job. Uh, isn't it sad uh, that now nobody worries about that anymore uh, because Christians are not fanatical for Christ uh, like they were when they first started. Uh, but may God give us the fervency uh, and the joy uh, so that if somebody, if anybody asks you uh, what's the matter with me, I'll be able to tell them I'm saved, uh, I'm sanctified, uh, I'm Holy Ghost filled, uh, I'm fire baptized, uh, and I got Jesus uh, on my side, uh, and I'm running for my life. Oh, clap your hand and give God a praise right there. Uh, but now, if you will, uh, Look at the slander uh, that came from his foes. Uh, it's in verse 22. Uh, the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, uh, he has Beelzebub. Uh, his foes, on the other hand, uh, thought that his energy didn't come from himself, uh, but came from the demons uh, that came out of Beelzebub, uh, who was the ruler of the demons. Demons. Uh, Beelzebub is translated uh, as Lord of the Flies, uh, but it would be better translated uh, as the Filth Lord uh, or the Lord of the Filth. Uh, and clearly fitting in with the picture we have here uh, because they were the king of an unclean spirit. Uh, and absurdly, uh, the suggestion was that Jesus cast out demons uh, by the Lord of the filth. Uh, and Jesus deals with it in verse 27. Uh, he says, no man can enter into a strong man's house. 
uh, and spoil his goods, uh, except he will first bind the strong man, uh, and then he will spoil his house. Uh, and skip down to verse 29. Uh, he says, but he that shall blaspheme uh, against the Holy Ghost uh, hath, hath never forgiveness, uh, but is in danger uh, of eternal damnation. Uh, you see, Jesus is raising the problem uh, of unforgivable sin. Uh, and clearly those who are troubled most about it uh, are the most unlikely to commit it. Uh, to say the least, uh, the unforgivable sin is such a firm position of unbelief uh, that this person has no concern or conscience uh, or condemnation is felt. Uh, but what we have here is a formidable warning about unbelief uh, because there is a sequence in unbelief uh, that leads down the road uh, to a place where God can neither be heard or heeded. Uh, and I dare warn you, you need to thank God uh, anytime somebody uh, invites you to church uh, because you never want to get to the place uh, that your heart is so cold uh, and you're so mind made up uh, that you have no concern or conscience uh, and feel no condemnation uh, every time you come to the house of God. Uh, you're saying, God, you're still working on me. Uh, I still got a chance. Uh, it's not over yet. Uh, and every time somebody invites you, uh, that's God saying, I'm still believing in you. Uh, I still think you got a chance. Uh, I still want you on my team. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Is there anybody here uh, that's glad that somebody didn't give up on you? Uh, you may not have come the first time. Uh, you may not have come the second or the third time. Uh, but I heard somebody say, please be patient with me. Uh, because God uh, is not through with me yet. Uh, he's still working on me. Uh, I wonder if I got five people uh, that will jump to their feet. Uh, give God ten seconds of praise. Uh, I say, thank God, uh, he's still working on me. Oh, clap your hand and praise him. You may be seated. I don't want you to give up on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Judas gave up on himself. But Peter said, how do I get back? But last we look at verse 31. There came then his brethren and his mother. And standing without, sent unto him, calling him. Uh, his family had felt like they were cut off from Jesus. Uh, they felt like he was unapproachable to them. Uh, and there is no attempt in the reply of Jesus uh, to disparage this natural relationship. Uh, but the concept that he's teaching is also clear. Uh, and I hope that you can receive it. Uh, that natural relationships uh, are temporary. Rary, huh? but spiritual relationships uh, are eternal. Uh, and the good news is uh, uh, that spiritual relationships uh, can start here uh, uh, and continue throughout eternity. Uh, but natural relationship, uh, if it doesn't have a spiritual part, uh, will end when this earth ends. Uh, you see, when natural and spiritual 
spiritual relationships uh, begin to rival each other for affection. Uh, our ultimate consideration must be uh, I've got to do the will of God. Uh, that God is more important uh, than any other relationship uh, that I can have. Uh, because as long as I got God, uh, I know I can make it. Uh, a son may forsake his mother. Uh, a mother may forsake her daughter. Uh, a husband may forsake his wife. Uh, a wife may forsake her husband. Uh, parents may forsake their children. Uh, and children forsake their parents. Uh, but God uh, will never leave you. Uh, even in the sixth and the seventh trial, uh, he'll be with you. Uh, it's the greatest relationship uh, you can have. Uh, a relationship uh, with the God of heaven. Oh, clap your hand and shout hallelujah. Uh, you see, multitudes of people have come to Jesus, uh, but he calls only a handful uh, to have a relationship with him. Uh, and the handful must learn uh, how to abide in him. Uh, it's in the abiding relationship uh, that the reality uh, of the eternal family of God uh, is rediscovered. Uh, and that's why I want to ask you, are you a friend? Are you a foe? Are you family? Are you a real praiser? Because will the real praisers please stand up? Who's a real praiser? Who has the right to praise the Lord? Somebody that God is blessed to escape the snare of Satan. Somebody who should have fell in the pit. But God brought you out. Uh, you didn't climb out. Uh, he lifted you out. Uh, I'm not talking to self-righteous folk. Uh, because self-righteous folk uh, can't praise the Lord. Uh, but folk that know uh, I should have been dead. Uh, I should have lost my mind. Uh, I should have lost everything I had. Uh, but he looked beyond my fault. Uh, I saw my need. The devil tried to crush me. The devil tried to throw me away. I did some stuff to my own self. I should have lost my mind. But for the grace of God, is there anybody here that admits that one of Grace's children? I'm not here on merit. I'm here on grace. God's amazing grace. Uh, are there any mercy babies uh, in the house of God? Uh, those that know uh, if you're here on mercy, uh, you give the best worship. Uh, you give the best praise. Uh, they've got something uh, they can thank God for. Uh, your grace and mercy uh, have brought me through. Uh, I'm living this moment uh, because of you. Uh, and I want to thank you uh, and praise you too uh, because it's your grace uh, and it's your mercy. Uh, if God did that for you, uh, you ought to praise him with your lips. Uh, you ought to praise him from your belly. Uh, you ought to open up your mouth uh, and tell God thank you. Uh, you ought to raise your hand uh, and give him glory uh, because you you're a real praiser. We're the real praisers. Open up their mouth and give God praise. Anybody that has experienced God's mercy, you don't have to beg them to praise the Lord. They should have been out on drugs. They should have had no food, no shoes, no clothes, just another number on their way to hell. But thank God for mercy. I was all alone without a friend, just another 
number with a tragic end. But thank God. Anybody want to say thank God? Thank God for mercy. I've got a right to give God a fat, big, juicy. Praise the Lord. I can't give a weak praise. I gotta give a strong praise. He's been too good to me. I gotta tell him thank you. And I mean it from my heart. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. From the pit of my belly. Not just a church praise, but a real praise. Deep worship. Not a shadow praise. But I praise him because of all he's already done. Oh, clap your hand and praise him. Some of us have no choice but to praise the Lord. Look at somebody next to you and ask them, are you a real praiser? I'm looking for some real worshipers. Not only that, but David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. What's really in your heart? Because if you're a real praiser, it doesn't matter who's on the organ. It doesn't matter who's on the drums. It doesn't matter who's singing. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I got to praise God for saving me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because if God would have done justice, if God would have done justice, we would have gotten rolling over by a steamroller. But he had mercy on us. And he looked beyond our faults. We were guilty. Is there anybody willing to admit you were guilty? You were guilty, but he looked beyond your fault and saw your need. And you can trust that type of person to praise the Lord no matter what's going on. There's somebody that owes God a praise. They owe him a thank you, Jesus. They owe him a glory. They're not ashamed to praise him. They're not ashamed to give him their testimony because they know where God brought them from. So excuse me. If it bothers you when I praise God, if you knew what he did for me, you would praise him too. If you knew the mercy he had on me, you would say, go ahead and praise him. you got to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that we will consider ourselves a praiser, not friends who talk about him or foes who try to destroy him, or family that tries to control him. But Lord God, that will be a praiser that says, Lord, whatever you do, you're still a good God. I praise you when I'm up. I praise you when I'm down. I praise you when I get what I want. I praise you when I don't get what I want. Because you are God. You are sovereign. And you never make a mistake. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if I can get some real praises to stand at their feet and give God a few seconds of praise. Somebody give them some praise right now.